Um, Sorry, I forgot to do this. Yeah, for training and quality purposes. Uh, my favorite thing about the group is the more time I spend working with Joomla, and I've been using it for about maybe six years, is um, the more I use it, the more I realize I don't know. Um, but thank goodness there's a room full of people here who do know the answers. So it's just nice to be part of this kind of little Joomla family. Appreciate it. Alan, why don't you go next and then we'll go to Wesley. All right, I'm Alan Badger. I'm in Plano, Texas, just north of Dallas. Um, I love this group because it's virtual, you know, so I could just take a short break and um, join this group and learn about learn more about Joomla. I've been using Joomla since 1.5. Uh, most of my sites are pretty simple, but they're getting more complex. Um, I'm primarily a software developer. Uh, maintaining websites is just something I have to do to for my business. Appreciate it. Thank you, Alan. Wesley, why don't we say hello to you and then we'll go to Joe Sonny next. Good morning, all. I'm Wesley from Tucson, Arizona. And yeah, I'm delighted that this group exists because I tried to start something like this in my hometown of Tucson and uh, it didn't really uh, take off at all um, and such. And so, uh, yeah, it's good for me uh, because I, just like others have already said, I get new ideas uh, from each each of y'all that uh, make mention of something. So thank you. Fantastic. Joe next and then Lisa. So um, hi, I'm Joe from uh, Guelph, Ontario. And uh, what I like about this group, uh, besides the fact that there's some of the friendliest Joomlers that I know that are in this group, is that the, belonging to this group means that you will always know what's going on with Joomla officially because someone in this group knows what's going on and uh, it, no one person knows everything but somebody knows what you need to find out or what you know and so this is a well-informed Jack. Wonderful. Lisa and then Laura. Hi everybody um, my name is Lisa Kaiser I'm in Fredericksburg Virginia which is just south of Washington DC and I've been working with Joomla um, since around 2007, 08, somewhere in there. And uh, my favorite thing about this group is actually the time that we meet. I have, there's a local jug here in uh, Northern Virginia that I used to go to the in-person meetings there in the evening. And I have a bunch of kids. So getting to evening meetings is really difficult. So I love that this is during work hours so I can work it into my schedule and actually be here with all of you lovely people. Oh, I love that. Laura and then Frank. Hi everybody, I'm Laura Gordon. Um, I live in uh, New Jersey, build websites, all that fun stuff. Um, what I love most about this group is the number of you that show up every month. It is beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. And from where everyone is coming from, you're making an effort to come every month. And that changes this group. And that's why. And of course, Robin, who thought of it a couple of years ago, that's like, huh, I can create a group. So I think the fact that you're all here, um, that's what makes this really worthwhile for me and, and for everybody, right? We couldn't exist if we would if we didn't show up. So thank you for showing up. Um, just another cute really little point anyone's interested in starting their own user group like maybe you love this one but you have an idea of doing another one maybe it's in your physical area or something like that we are having a jug um leadership meeting this is through joomla.org so it's a jug leadership meeting and it's meant for anyone that and i'm gonna throw the link out for you to register if you're interested it is meant for anyone that's interested in starting a jug, currently has a jug, anyone that wants to run a jug to see the ideas that Robin came up with, because every jug is a little different. You got the one in London, you got, you know, and the more of them we have, just think about it. If every jug, you know, there was a different one, maybe a different time or whatever, think of how many more people would be interacting and doing the beautiful things that you're all doing. So anyway, if anyone's interested, register. It's on uh, Thursday, June 29th at, um, did I put the right time in? It's 1700 UTC. I have to fix the time. SD, I have to fix the time. Um, it's 1700 UTC, 11 a.m. 
Eastern time. So anyway, thank you for the plug. All right. And I sometimes I jump onto some of the other ones and I see lots of members from here um, on those as well. And they're just they're just learn, they're they're gaining knowledge and, and value from everyone that they jump into and they all have different value. They're different types of groups for sure. Frank, and then we'll go to Ann next. Hi, I'm Frank. I'm in uh, very drizzly Ventura County, California. And uh, my, I think my, there's a lot of favorite things I have about this group, but um, the one that comes to mind is that it feels very friendly <clears throat> and, um, and inclusive. I attend other meetups for various things in the realm of web development design, and sometimes it can be quite intimidating, and I don't feel so intimidated here. Oh, good. Well, I appreciate that. That's what we're going for. Um, Anne, you want to say hello, and then... Yeah. I Next. Yeah, hi everyone. I'm uh, Ann Noter Thomas. I'm in Syracuse, New York. And this group has been amazing for me. Before it started, I felt so stuck. And the, the information that's come out of here has been more useful than any of the other groups I've been a part of, not saying they have been bad, but I've gotten real actionable information as far as plugins to try, information on migrating the the sites I've got now four Joomla sites I four four Joomla four sites um, that are all new clients for me since this group and um, another thing just even the tiniest things Laura one of the the first meetings we had you in one of your demonstrations you were showing how to do something but you you just clicked on the categories and it showed all the articles in that category. And that was the tiniest thing I didn't know about. I use it all the time now and it saves me so much time. So even the tiniest little thing, but um, it, it's been a fantastic group for me. And I apologize for being late. Um, the time is good, but it's just slightly a little early for me. <laughs> <laughs> as far as getting client work done in the morning, so. Uh, I have someone trying to join like three times. I'm not sure what that is. Um, we're gonna go to Ed. Person is stuck. Um, and, then, hey. and then after that, we'll go to SD. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all. This is Ed Hathaway from Greensboro, North Carolina. Um, the one thing I like about this jug is that I can come in and out of it at my pleasure and leisure, uh, but I can also see it on the YouTube uh, later on. So that's just fabulous. Um, and thank you, Robin. This has been uh, this has been a welcome back for me. So thank you. Oh, of course. All right, SD and then Yorgos. Hey, good morning. <laughs> Hi, so this is my first time joining you guys today. Um, I have met several of you on other uh, Joomla events. I am Joomla user group Chicago North. Uh, we have not had a meeting in a while. And <laughs> part of the reason is I have taken on duties as co-manager for Joomla 4.3, which took a lot of time. So I didn't have a chance to uh, keep our group going. We do have uh, meetings during the day on Wednesdays, uh, we'll be getting those going again here in the next couple of months. Um, but the reason I joined today is my schedule freed up and I've heard so many great things about this group. Good. And I know Robin and some of the other participants and I know how, how um, much information you guys share and how many good ideas that I get from you. And so I thought I'd pop in and see how, how things are going. Nice to see you, SD. Yeah. All right. Next, we're going to go to Yorgos. And then, Jesse, if you were able to get on, we'll, we'll have you talk. Hello. My name is Yorgos. I'm from Cyprus. And what I like about this group, I like that I have to spend a valuable time with people that I don't know, but they think they are friends with me now. Yeah. Uh, I do have a lot of questions that uh, I got the answer from here. And it's very useful. It's very useful for me. That's all. Great answer. 
Jesse, have you been able? Okay, great. Hi. Hi, my name is Jesse. I'm from uh, Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, this is the second time. I've been watching guys on YouTube. So this is the first time okay. I'm joining the meeting. And uh, the reason to join is to get more ideas on how to develop more on Joomla. Uh, I use mostly Joomla for travel websites. So that's the reason I, I've been, uh, most people want to come to Kenya and Africa. So we develop websites for them for people to come and to see packages and to see what they can do in Kenya. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Brian. Hi, I'm Brian Mitchell from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And this is my first time, uh, but I'm gonna uh, cheat Robin and say what I love about this group already. Um, it's uh, the leadership and uh, there's, there's a lot of folks uh, in this group that have done a lot for Joomla. Um, and th it's really true of everybody that's sitting in on this call. Even your presence is an affirmation to those that have been contributing for a long time. Uh, but those of you that have done stuff uh, for the larger uh, national and international communities for Joomla, um, I'm just always astounded and grateful at people's energy and enthusiasm and effort on behalf of the project. Wonderful. I see one person who looks like they're still trying to connect. Um, is there anybody that I missed around the room? Mike's trying to get in for a second time. Did you show up? We'll wait a second. And I'll he put was up earlier, up. I think, and then dropped. Yeah, and then he dropped out. Mike, my buddy from LA. You want to say hello? Hi, everybody. <laughs> Say who you are, where you're from, and what you love about this group. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm from Los Angeles, born and raised. Um, I like being part of the community and uh, helping advance Joomla to a higher status. Good answer. Great. And um, lastly, my name is Robin Clapp. I'm um, a Joomla user since 2007 and um, struck out many times to find a jug to be a member of. And Laura said, why don't you start a virtual one? They're doing those now. Man, if I'd grown, if I were to go back and look at the first meeting that I ran, I was very nervous and stumbling on my words. So I've evolved just by you guys putting me in this role. And I truly appreciate, like Laura said, so many of you come back every single week I mean, sorry, every single month. And I love seeing your faces again. And I love reaching out to you offline. And I love seeing you on Facebook and seeing you at J Day USA, if you could make it. And at the J Day USAs that were, were virtual, uh, fully virtual. Um, so thank you for letting me do this. That's what I love about this group. All right, so we have a spotlight today. Carlos has agreed to be our spotlight. So Carlos, we're gonna give you 10 minutes to go over whatever you'd like. Are you gonna share the screen? Yes, please. Okay, I'm gonna let you do that. And go ahead and give that a try. Beautiful, I can see it. Can everyone else see it? Yes. All right, can everyone hear you? Can you hear me? Yeah. I have his voice and his screen. He's good. All right, you're good. Go for it. Okay, give me, give me. Oh, wait. Where is my presenter screen? Presenter screen. No, that is not what I want. Take your time. Yeah. Uh, okay, presenter screen is here. Now I need my quick screen where is my screen i don't know oh here it is okay presenter view here is the presentation okay um, can you see my slides yep okay let's Perfect. go okay i'm carlos camara it's my first time in the group but i also have been watching your uh, youtube uh, session so it's like we are family now <laughs> at least for me uh i'm going to do the what what they love about this group is uh having together in the same room lots of uh, mm -hmm. web developers 
where we can share our uh, experience, we can share our issues, we can uh, talk about Jula. So I, I miss that a lot in Spain. I have always wanted to create a, a Jack, but when I was in the position to do so, uh, Jula was not interesting here anymore. So, okay, anyway, I'm going to talk about the squeezing Jula in my spotlight session. To be honest, I don't know what is a spotlight session. So I I watched your previous spotlight sessions and I think it's like presenting what I do and that stuff. So mm -hmm. let's go for it. I'm Carlos Camara. I'm father of three kids. And you can contact me through email, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever uh, you find interesting. I'm there. Uh, I do web development as a as a living. I have my own company, Epta Technologies. I have been working with Yula since Mambo times, as the old guys usually say. And yeah, I started focusing on Yula uh, thanks to J Events Project. Okay, I I started helping uh, doing the support there in twenty nine, in two thousand nine. Sorry. And I have a, a good uh, background in help desk because I, when you are managing a support for extension, you learn how difficult some clients or some users are sometimes. So uh, you learn to be patient, you learn to do not uh, give uh, things for granted and other stuff. Also at G-Events, we always uh, gave a very personalized support. We were like very, very keen on on helping our our users and developing specific stuff for them if it was possible and if it made sense for the for all the extensions in the events. After the events, uh, Garant released easy layouts and your sites, and I was involved in those at some point. Right now, I'm not. Uh, officially part of the team but i was not fired <laughs> so <laughs> it's like i am i am there you can uh, ask me if you have any questions about any of these extensions because i use them and i love them uh, i love them so there is no no problem for me to to help you with them uh also in j events i created the documentation i brought uh, some blog posts i developed some of the extensions you can use uh, from their club club i also help fixing bugs and that stuff so it, it was like a great learning working there working with getting it was nice all these years and i i love it so i also started having my own extensions most of these are like uh, custom solutions for customers and I thought they could be all for myself. And I thought they could be interesting for anyone. So I published them at extensions.epta.es. And my most popular ones are estimated reading time plugin. It's a plugin which shows you the, the amount of time it takes to read a Joomla article. And the front-end user manager, which, as you may guess, is an extension to manage the users but from the front end. Uh, this last one is not officially yet in Jula 4, although I have a, a copy in for Jula 4. Right now, uh, everything at uh, Epta Extensions is free. So if you need a user management solution for Jula 4, just let me know, okay? And I will send you the, the copy that works for Jula 4. I am also a content creator. And my latest creation is the Epta Extensions podcast, which seems to be your weekly Jula News <laughs> uh, podcast. So uh, if you want to be more or less uh, on top of what's uh, going on with Jula, it's a, a good place to start. It's a five minutes uh, episode uh, and it's very, I don't know, I try to make it very dynamic so you do not have to to wait a lot. I, I, I'm trying to make it a bit different. So let's see. I mainly have done, have written content in Spanish for Gene Unla, which was nominated at best uh, blog, uh, blogging site in Wang Jay and Beyond, uh, which for, for us was like a great 
uh, achievement because it's a mainly Spanish blog. It, it had no no content in English, so to be nominated there was very 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 fulfilling. Uh, I also have Manuel's Web, which is a platform for selling Jula courses in Spanish. And I also have a very, what I think is a very successful podcast, mastermindweb.es, uh, which is about Jula and which uh, glued together the Spanish community, the Spanish speaking community around the world in Jula uh, goes for, for it. And, and we are very, very proud of that. I, I host this with, I co-host this podcast with Andrea Gentil. But what they do for a living is working in web development. I mainly work for agencies or freelancers who need my assistance. I also have some uh, direct customers, but they are mostly for PrestaShop. Okay, I, I am specialized in Joomla and PrestaShop, although I can work whatever is web related. And I like to think of myself as a virtual partner they can trust and work as part of the team and be involved to the to the project I am working on to the maximum. Okay. Uh, well, I I I named this talk squeezing Yula because I wanted to tell you what you can do with Yula as a developer. Because as a Yula develop as a developer, you can take advantage of existing extensions. I'm pretty sure most of you use lots of extensions to build your websites. Whenever you need a ticket system, you go to uh, RS events or DT register or J events, or whenever you need a registration form, you go to RS forms or, or uh, simple forms, whatever. But when you are a developer, you can uh, extend things to, to the limit, take things to the limit, and you have endless possibilities. So I, I think it's, it's great to, to be in this position. And that has uh, allowed me to create great websites. Uh, like, for instance, this uh, Brighton website, I work with a partner in the USA. And it was a very interesting site. It was mo mostly written with uh, Jula extensions, but we needed to tweak a little bit of them. We needed to create a couple of plugins, a couple of extensions to uh, plug together all the information they wanted to to show. If you ask me, I will tell you the site is not very beautiful, but it's what the customer wanted. Wanted a very very uh, content centric uh, site and with this small uh, font. Uh, I have also been able to uh, develop mobile apps using Joomla as a backend, like for instance this couple of us. Let's start with this real time app. If you are in the USA, you can use it. It's to uh, locate uh, workshops for your track uh, using uh, along all the, the USA. And to be honest, this is a, it's not using Joomla uh, as the backend because it uses a different uh, service provider. But uh, we also have a, a Joomla a web application. Uh, that was working also in the same manner as the mobile application. This mobile app was in Android and iOS. And we also have, this is like a side project we had, and it was a very interesting one. It was my first mobile app, and it was a coupon discount uh, app for uh, cannabis uh, shops, okay? Uh, it was very interesting because uh, we work with lots of nice technologies like geofencing, um, uh, notifications, and the uh, backend of the application was a Joomla website. And we also have a couple of um, uh, scripts that were uh, crawling over uh, coupons websites, looking for cup coupons and adding them to the Joomla backend. It was very very interesting to to make this. Uh, web application and I mean this mobile application and also the, the website that was working with, with it as the backend. Finally, I wanted to show another really great extension. It was a contest uh, site. I For this website, I had to build a, full, a template, a component, a J3 component, also the API, the web service API for this uh, Joomla 4 
uh, part and it was really really great to work with Eula 4 and to see how you can integrate it with Eula 3 using the web service so yeah I, I love it did and finally yes I wanted to say thank you I think I am almost in the 10 minutes otherwise just let me know and yeah oh Carlos that was I, wonderful and if you attended some um JDA conferences in the past. I know he's been a speaker and stepped up and 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 um, you can see him at those events. And thank you so much for coming and for watching the presentations when you can't be here. I had no idea that people were actually watching them. So that's a great <laughs> indicator that they're finding some value in our content. Um, our, our, our regular presentation today, our 30 minute presentation is gonna be Brian Mitchell and we'll open up for questions and you can say Brian whether you want people to ask during or after um actually uh I'm hoping to have a nice conversation there'll be a couple of uh, opportunities during the presentation where I will toss some questions out to the folks that are here and um uh it's I'm super impressed with a really nice size group um so when we do that it's sort of popcorn like just hit them quick don't worry about talking over somebody else <laughs> generally when I'm tossing questions out if you just want to hit really quick uh responses um we'll start off with a little bit of brainstorming around some of the topics I'm going to present today and then um yeah and if you have questions during feel free otherwise um, we might be best to save longer format stuff toward the end sounds great go ahead all right, great. And uh, I'm going to work through the same issues that we had with Carlos and getting my deck up. Um, confirming you all can see that. Yeah. Yep. Wonderful. Um, so uh, Robin, as she mentioned at the beginning of uh, the conversation today, um, this is a presentation I did at Joomla Day USA um, just like a month or two back, April, I guess. Yeah, April, two months ago. Um, uh, can I just get a quick, like, uh, how many folks were present for that uh, presentation, either virtually or in person? Wesley, I see you raising your hand. Robin, anybody else? Pat was there virtually. Pat as well. Okay, great. I just wanted to know, it, this is like a straight up uh, representation of that. So we can sort of A, B them and, and figure out which one had a better delivery um, at the end of the conversation. Okay. So if that's well, helpful. There was this wonderful youth theme presentation going on at the same time as us, Brian. And and so a lot of people missed that afternoon. Class. Well, and, it's, and, and that's uh, part of the joy and the challenge. Of, and I always say like my favorite thing about uh, in-person events is what happens between the sessions. Um, although Joomla Day USA this year was phenomenal in terms of the quality of the sessions. So I was conflicted the entire weekend about where I was supposed to be and who I was supposed to be listening to and all the people I wanted to talk to. So, um, so good. I'm, I'm glad to have an opportunity to sort of uh, represent this information in the event that it's helpful for anybody. Um, to that end, uh, the um, primary focus of the conversation today is how healthy is your Joomla business? Um, let's start with uh, just a quick uh, and, and we don't have to do like a full round robin each person, but again, just sort of that popcorn quick responses. What are all of the ways that people are offering services in and around the Joomla ecosystem? Um, and if you're a, a website builder integrator, don't use that as an excuse to say, oh, I just build websites. Like what's your wheelhouse? What what um, What's your special skill set um, in the area of website development that really um, makes your services unique? Um, so anybody just toss them out. You can... Uh, and a lot of people are muted. Thank you for that. But feel free to turn your microphone on and just let us know what you're thinking. How do you make money with Joomla? What's, what's your business model? Uh, hi, can I speak? Yes, please, Richard, go for it. Hi, hi, yeah. Um, so I've uh, before I uh, sort of dipped my toe into the Joomla waters, uh, I was already doing a huge amount of e-commerce development and uh, using um, open carts and WooCommerce to, to a certain extent. But um, what I found is I'm, I'm doing more and more e-commerce now with um, a couple of uh, components with Joomla and the uh, clients really like it. It's, I mean, it's a little bit different to other platforms they use, but uh, I forgot which one it is, but you can actually incorporate OpenCart directly into Joomla. And it's like Joomla's version of WooCommerce as far as I'm concerned, because it oh, has perfect. all the whistles. Perfect. E-commerce, I just want to make sure we get a, a broad range of responses. So e-commerce, thank you for that, Richard. I'm going to acknowledge Carlos was talking about um, extension development. Um, for those of us that start out as uh, website integrators, uh, that's like the dark arts. 
like when you can start building your own components. And um, so we're always super impressed and appreciative of the huge ecosystem. So extension development, Richard mentioned e-commerce. What else? I like to do accessible websites. Accessibility. Thank you for that, Robin. Um, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so, I'll, I'll, I'll mention something. Sorry, I can't see everybody's video, so I'm not sure good. Who, else is. <laughs> who else is talking. I build um, membership and uh, websites. So I work with a lot of associations where they need various levels of login access. ACL is extremely important. Um, have some membership software outside integrated. Like I have one website running Civi CRM, a bunch using Memberships Pro. Um, and some HOAs, similar kind of deal where resident only access, um, really important to have specific things locked down and ever, other things public. And Joomla is like the perfect software for that. So. Perfect. Thank you. I was going to say, Jesse says tour and travel in the chat. And then SD said self-maintaining websites, consultants for Joomla colleagues working on their own Joomla sites, and many small businesses, nonprofits, and solopreneurs. Awesome. Thank you. And uh, Robin, if you could continue to do that, I lose my oh. chat dialogue box uh, when I have my okay. presentation up. So Laura said she does library websites and university websites. Awesome. Awesome. Good. So that's lots of different ways that people are, and, and I'm just acknowledging uh, the information I'm going to share is sort of broad-based. If you came today looking for how to incorporate a custom field into a module, I'm sorry you're at the wrong jug. <laughs> we did that one already. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm confident that will be covered in this jug at some point. It's just not part of my presentation. So today's really just about um, how to, uh, different ways to understand uh, what makes for a healthy business uh, within the Joomla ecosystem. Um, I'm a huge uh, sponge. I just soak up lots of information. Um, I'm, I'm addicted to audiobooks. Um, I started with Audible. It's going to be my last proprietary plug of the day, I promise, uh, before Amazon bought them. I have over 400 books in, the, in my library. I listen to them at double speed because I can't get enough fast enough. Um, and I love just talking with people uh, in, in opportunities like this. Um, it's a great chance to learn. So everything I'm going to share with you today, I have borrowed heavily from other folks. Um, and hopefully I'm just packaging it in a way that provides you an on-ramp um, to, uh, there's basically three main chunks in the presentation today. And if any of those three chunks are interesting, I do acknowledge the folks that I've borrowed from. Um, and if I did it well, uh, it's only because they provided such great information. If I do a chunk today and you're like, I don't get that at all, it's probably how I presented it. The folks I'm going to refer you to, um, I, I assure you, have provided amazing information. So I'm just borrowing heavily from uh, people that are smarter than I am and how to do this stuff. And these are resources that I have found to be really helpful in running my own business. Um, which is a web development hosting business. And over the years, we've really, over the years going back again to Mambo days, um, I think it's 15 or 16 years is our official incorporation anniversary this year. Um, but just uh, moving more from website development, we've really um, started to focus more on hosting and white glove services around maintenance and management of existing websites. One of these days, I'm going to go back and look at how many of our clients' sites I've actually built uh, versus just acquired um, and folks we've brought over from other platforms, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, um, uh, and sort of shared with them all of the beautiful things that we're all familiar with uh, in Joomla. So um, thank you for contributing. I got one more uh, quick question as we get started. What I want to do is we look at um, how healthy our uh, Joomla business is, is um, to play something that I call the apocalypse game. Um, and, and actually, I was uh, playing this game with a, uh, another group of Joomlers uh, just last night. Joe was party to that conversation. And the apocalypse game is asking ourselves uh, in sort of a fun, relaxed way, which we never get to do, what are all the things that could go wrong with uh, the businesses that we just talked about? Um, so as we do this, um, we're just going to, again, sort of that really quick, if you give me like one or two word answers is ideal, one or two sentences is okay. But what are all the things that could go wrong with the Joomla business? I'll open up the floor, open up your mic, let, it, uh, let me know uh, what could possibly go wrong. Mm -hmm. I was in the original presentation. <laughs> um, um, Joomla could not be supported anymore. That's a big problem, right? Okay. So if Joomla as a project, if it forked or if the project, these are things we shouldn't say and post to YouTube, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> but in reality, that's why we need these volunteers. It is. Yeah, we should. We're always going to embrace things with courage. Uh, what, what, are, what else could go wrong with a business? Mm. You can clients stop coming. Uh, one more time, Carlos. 
clients stop coming on the clients stop coming new business dries up the overall wow. economy takes a downturn what I else wants to type i can also read what's in the chat if you'd rather type um one for me is consolidation i've had a couple clients get absorbed into other organizations i just had one absorbed and the new organization is on wix so <laughs> what are you going to do? Nothing. So yeah. right. wait, right. wait silently until they. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my this business. company that had a great platform anyway. <laughs> what else? That's a good one. Thank you, Lisa. I'll throw one in there. A significant stakeholder in the website that's integral to its operation could go missing for any reason and you no longer have access to technical properties or or special things. Joe's dancing around the what if I get hit by a bus scenario, right? So a lot of us are freelancers or solopreneurs. Um, so what happens for your clients if something happens to you? Um, uh, that's uh, That was really the focus of our conversations last night. Anybody use password managers? I'm going to see lots of heads nodding for this, right? Um, what if uh, there was a security issue and your whatever your password management system were compromised? Uh, what would that mean? Um, I, th there should be a deep inhale of, oh my goodness, uh, it, it, you know, that thought. Hosting environment is another uh, possibility. Anybody ever have a website go down or a server go down? <laughs> right? Yeah. So how do I, you know, how do you handle? So, okay. So now that we've I've uh, got a bunch of, but I've got a bunch of answers in the oh, chat. Please, Robin. Yeah, hit it. Yeah. Um, people jumping to other CMSs, clients <laughs> retiring, younger ones not aware of Joomla. So yeah. So Joomla, um, it's popularity, I guess. Um, and migration costs, people not wanting to do the migration costs, and, you know, for us, we don't backwards compatible to, to, so that we can be better. Um, sometimes we have to leave behind. So there is a migration cost to a great extent, extent is the better way to go. Um, I become unable to work and cannot continue my services for my clients. I think Joe just mentioned that as well. Yeah, that's tough. That's all of them. So those are um, those are all important. And as we list those, there's really three filters I want you to run those through um, in terms of their relevance for your particular business. Um, uh, so filter number one is uh, what is the likelihood of that scenario happening? Um, two is what is the impact? Um, so if if that were to happen, and actually I have slides, I think that yeah, there we go. It's almost like I uh, did this before. Um, how likely is each problem to occur? Uh, how significant is the impact on your business? Um, that, of course, uh, would matter. And then uh, what can you do now to reduce or mitigate the current risk? Um, so for some of the things we've talked about, uh, migration risk, migration costs, those sorts of things, um, a lot of the things that we've discussed, I'm sure uh, many or all of you have given some serious thought or consideration to those things. And really what I'm encouraging in this presentation is to be a little bit more rigorous about that, is, is not to wait for the issues to occur and then start to give them some thought, but to start to anticipate. Um, because so much of a healthy business is um, not just about profit margin and, and the bottom line, it's about uh, avoiding the cataclysm or when it comes being prepared to deal with it. Um, so really those are the three filters that we'll work through um, as I work through the rest of the presentation is that assessment of how likely is each problem for your business, how significant is the impact and what can you do now? And then as you look at those three questions, I would start to sort of order these. So if there's uh, something that just popped up in the conversation and either you're like, oh man, I never thought about that, or I've thought about it, but I really haven't given it the consideration I should. This is your opportunity, and I'm glad this is recorded for posterity because folks can go back through that list of apocalypse events and start to um, prioritize them. And I would come up with your top five to 10, uh, like half a dozen is kind of the sweet spot in terms of this would be a high impact event that would have some possibility of being likely. Um, and uh, that, that last step is sort of what can I do to reduce or mitigate current risk now? And then the next step after you've played the apocalypse game is to ask yourself, what is your action plan? Um, and not just to daydream about that, but to actually capture it somewhere. So if this scenario, so you're going to come up with a half a dozen or so scenarios, if each one of these happened, what uh, steps would you take to recover from that situation? What is your action plan? The second piece is, what is your communications plan? Um, and that can uh, be internal. Uh, are there folks that you need to be reaching out to internally to address? How do you want to handle communications with your client? 
actually write the communication ahead of time as though the scenario happened. Um, so you're going to write, you're going to draft the email. Do you need to do a series of emails, uh, communications? Should you be doing phone calls? Those sorts of things. And then uh, I actually uh, did this uh, presentation. I tag teamed with Robert Jacoby in Texas. And he's like, will your clients need a communication plan? So if you had a situation, uh, uh, Richard, you had mentioned e-commerce sites earlier. If there were a security problem on an e-commerce site, um, your client probably needs to do some communication with their customers. Um, yeah. and how would they handle that? How would you work through that? Um, and then be sure to include a, a communications plan. Uh, and then the last piece on this um, is, and I'll, I'll get to Tom Brannigan in just a second, who inspired this part of my presentation. Uh, he's actually my brother-in-law, and he runs a communications firm here in Milwaukee um, that provides uh, their specialty. One of their specialties is crisis communications, um, and, and he services uh, all, all kinds of businesses, Fortune 500 companies, in terms of how to handle crisis when it occurs. Um, so if that's of interest to you, you can check out brannigan.inc.com. Um, Tom would be thrilled to have a conversa conversation with you and uh, name. feel free to name drop if you do that. I, I heard about you from Brian Mitchell's presentation. He'll know exactly who you're talking about. Um, but uh, Tom has really encouraged me to think more rigorously about how I would handle these sorts of things. And then what you do once you have these action plans in place, again, if you've got a half a dozen crises, half a dozen action plans with a communications plan, put them in a safe spot, tuck them away for a rainy day, because we know the rain will come. It's not an if, it's a when. And when the rain comes, there will be aspects of it that are more or less unexpected. Um, so none of whatever the next thing that pops for you is, it won't exactly match any of the uh, action plans that you've created, but there's one that'll be close or closer than the others. And what you can do then is take that off the shelf, and now you have a blueprint for how to handle the situation that you were able to put together at a time when you were calm, when you were relaxed, when you were thoughtful and working through all of the implications. So this is really just a crisis management plan um, so that you're ready to go if and when uh, something, not if, when something happens, you've already got a game plan ready to go. So uh, that's that's piece number one. Piece number two, I'm gonna talk about the four by four method for agency growth. It emphatically has nothing to do with four by four trucks. And in fact, uh, the person that I borrowed this from is, would probably be horrified that I even put the picture of the truck in this deck uh, to introduce, but I'm emphatically saying it has nothing to do with trucks. It deals with the four stages of business growth, um, and I'll work through these very quickly, and then I'll come back to them again in a second. So if you don't get a chance, pre-validation is when you first started out, what was the first website you built? What was the first extension you created for Joomla? Um, and you had this idea of like, this might be a value, and maybe it was a, a donation to a nonprofit, like, hey, I'll just help them get on the internet, and in the process, I'll get to learn some things. So how did you get introduced um, to this land of building websites? That's pre-validation. I think I have something that might be a value. Validation is uh, the notion where you're like, oh my gosh, that worked. And maybe you've done it like two or three times. And uh, you're like, there might be something here uh, that, that could be a business. So um, then you decided uh, to see if you could repeat the process that you did during pre-validation and maybe ironed out some of the kinks, um, but uh, started to add some more just to say, yeah, uh, this is a going concern. We have an opportunity here. Leverage man, this thing's kind of cooking along. Uh, that's This is the point at which you want to start to standardize because one of the dangers during the validation phase is you're an expert in everything, right? Accessibility, SEO, design, custom development, hosting. And, these are, and the problem is people come to you with these needs because they're all real needs and you're looking for business. You're hungry for business. So we run the risk of saying, yeah, I can figure that out because we figured out the first thing. We can figure out the second thing and the third thing and the fourth thing. And all of a sudden we've created a monster, right? So um, leverage is the time when you really want to zero in. And that's why I said, I know we're all building websites in some capacity, but kind of know your wheelhouse, um, know what you're you're great at, and then develop uh, standard operating procedures around that uh, part of your process um, and figure out what you need to outsource. Uh, uh, one of the other big benefits of working in the Joomla community is you get to know people. Who, oh, oh, Robin knows accessibility. I have a client that needs that. Instead of me spending hours, weeks, months trying to become an expert in something that Robin is amazing at, it'll be a much greater value for me, for my client, and for Robin if I pick up the phone and say, hey, uh, I have a client that has this need. Does that sound like a tight fit? And I'm finding those sorts of collaborations are incredibly healthy uh, in terms of 
allowing you to stay in your wheelhouse. You get to learn a little bit about accessibility in the meantime, and then everybody gets to grow together. Um, so uh, that third phase of growth is leverage. And by the time you get to the fourth phase of growth, you're at uh, scale, which means you got everything dialed. You've built a team. Um, there's a nice fire going. And when it comes to stage four, you're looking for the gas can. Uh, we have all of our uh, processes in place. Let's pour some gasoline on this fire and, and just really go bon bonkers with it. And for each one of these, you know, it's pre-validation. I'm talking a handful of websites. One, two, three. By the time you get to validation, you might be looking at 10 to 12. Leverage starts to matter when you're talking about dozens of websites. And uh, if you move beyond that leverage phase to scale, that's really when you're talking about that there is no limit uh, in terms of uh, your growth aspirations and potential. I know that scale is not the goal for most Joomla freelancers. They're focused on, I'm developing a good set of clients that I want to focus on. That's great. A huge part of a healthy business is knowing yourself, what you want to do, and more, and more importantly, knowing what you don't want to do. Um, that, that gives that level of self-awareness is incredibly helpful. So that's uh, block number four. I'm going to show it to you again in a second. So if you missed anything on that number, uh, the, the other four in the four by four method uh, deals with what are the four uh, uh, centers of activity for each uh, for your business? Uh, the first is marketing. Where do you build your audience? Where do you find your potential for new clients? Uh, number two is sales. How do you move somebody from being aware of the services you offer uh, to being a customer? Um, so how do you, what's your process for moving somebody from, hey, I think I might want a website all the way to uh, getting them on board and actually launching the website? Um, the last piece, or the, excuse me, the third piece is operations. Um, and this does, it sounds a little overlappy, but operations is all the stuff you need to run a business that has nothing to do with your product or service. Your accountant, your lawyer, um, just working through the tactical stuff of uh, running a business that uh, doesn't have anything directly to do with your product or service. And then the last piece is fulfillment. So you sold them the product. Now we got to build it. And what's your process for doing that? So that's the four by four method uh, for growth. Going back to the four stages of growth. This is linear, pre-validation, validation, leverage, and scale. It's sequential. It moves uh, through each step one at a time. Uh, and then the last part is uh, the four departments marketing, sales, operations, and fulfillment. Our team gets together once a quarter um, and we evaluate where we sit in both of these grids. Evaluation number one, like we're mid to late stage leverage and trying to get all of our standard operating procedures figured out so that we can go to scale. Um, we've developed a really nice base of clients all over the country. I, I decided several years ago that I was um, as or more interested in building a company than I was in building websites. And that was a discernment process on our part was to say, I wanna build a team and, and grow that team uh, to serve clients well, because there's stuff that I don't enjoy <laughs> about the web, web development process. And it allows me to work with other folks who do enjoy those things. And then we get this great synergy that kicks in. Uh, but during that quarterly meeting, uh, the more important piece is we do the four departments and we say, where are we killing it right now? Like, what are we doing and forever? I never thought we'd get out of marketing phase. Like, how do we grow people that are aware of our services? Um, and I used to say to the team all the time, I'm like, get me too many sales and then I'll solve the fulfillment problems later. Where that Joomla 4 migrations have helped this <laughs> a lot, um, but we're at a point where like uh, operations and fulfillment is the challenge that we're facing right now. So we um, spend a lot of time at our quarterly meetings saying which of these four quadrants is our focus for the upcoming quarter, where are we struggling most right now, and let's uh, get that figured out. And it provides us incredible focus because that way we're not doing all the things all the time. And it's the classic, if everything is important, then nothing is important. And what this uh, understanding these four departments and how they impact our business has really allowed us to say, our energy this quarter really needs to be around X. And it creates incredible focus for us um, to manage the health of the business. So uh, the first four is linear. This one we find to be more rotational and changes over time. This was borrowed uh, from a woman by the name of Kelly Gordon. Um, I actually, she and I have done a series, uh, this probably goes back a year or more now, a series of exchanges um, saying, hey, we should connect sometime. We've never actually connected, uh, except through, I think, Facebook Messenger. Uh, she did acknowledge that she started out in a Joomla agency at the beginning of her career, probably going back to over 15 years, and I cannot wait to have that conversation with her. Um, I did not check with her about presenting her. She created this framework, and my understanding is she is focused now on the business of helping agencies grow. Um, so if those services are interesting to you, I would encourage you to check out Kelly Gordon. Um, she's uh, a 
firecracker, tons of energy. Um, and it's I, even just watching the content that she put out, puts out, I've uh, found to be very inspirational. Um, so good stuff there. And then finally, uh, I'm going to conclude today with profit pumpkins and toilet paper. Um, these are not my metaphors. I'm borrowing from uh, Mike Michalowicz, um, who's really dedicated to helping entrepreneurs be successful. Uh, I believe MikeMichalowicz.com is his official website, but he's acknowledged that not everybody knows how to spell Michalowicz uh, easily. Um, so he actually has MikeMotorbike.com. If you click, if you go to that address, MikeMotorbike.com, that was his nickname when he was a kid, um, that will take you to his primary website. Um, and this is really three different books that he's put out. They're very entertaining. Um, so they're an easy read, but incredibly informational, um, especially uh, for, for uh, starting a new business, especially if you're a solopreneur. Um, the first one is a book called The Toilet Paper Entrepreneur. Um, SD, SD says she loves Mike's books. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah, I'll, and I'll take all that affirmation. So it, it, it's good to me to know other people have connected in this way as well. Um, he doesn't use this language. I'm going to give you sort of the snoozy corporate language for the concepts that he's presenting, but he doesn't care about the lexicon. What he wants is for you as an entrepreneur to get the, the concept so that you can incorporate it into your business. And he really does talk about the uh, core values. I don't know if he ever uses the term core values in this book, but there's a big section on really understanding what's important to you and then building your business around that. So you don't end up spending your life doing something that's not important to you. Um, and that's really the, the value of core values is if you know, if you understand deeply what you value, it's easier to build a business around that. So it's important to give some time uh, and some thought to that. Uh, he also talks about vision. Um, you know, what, what's your dream state? Where do you want to be in five years? Um, what kind of clients do you want to have in five years? How many clients do you want to have in five years? Um, so he provides some great uh, tools ar around clarifying your vision for where that's at. Second book, oh, I'm sorry, and then Quarterly Rhythm. I mentioned a few minutes ago that our team does quarterlies. I don't remember if I got this from Mike Michalowicz or I was doing it before I came across it in the book. But um, generally, the more frequently our team meets, the shorter the meeting and the more tactical, the more spread out. So we do a weekly Monday morning meeting where we talk about the upcoming week and make sure we're all in sync for the week. Uh, I know a lot of software developers do daily standups. Those are like five minutes. It's like really quick. What are you working on? What's in the way? And, and uh, that's uh, this is like all scrum agile stuff, if you know that. Uh, that body of literature. Um, we found our quarterly meetings to be incredibly helpful. They tend to be more operational. And then in the dream world, I'm not there yet. I'd love to be doing annual retreats where we're taking, you know, an entire two day period and going off somewhere and talking about the big picture stuff. Um, so anyway, that's where we're at in terms of our uh, team. Pumpkins, he has another book called The Pumpkin Plan. Um, one of my favorite concepts, and he doesn't present it exactly this way, but when I read it, it blew my mind. Um, and it's how to increase your productivity by 400%. Everybody knows the 80-20 rule, right? Pareto's principle, right? 80% um, of your revenue comes from 20% of your clients. 80% of your challenges come from 20% of your clients, yes. right? If that's true, okay, and who, who just said yes? I'm gonna Pat. <laughs> Pat, okay, thank you, Pat. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, and I, to be clear, we're very um, emphatic. All of our clients are smart. They're just smart in things that are different than we're smart in. And thank God, or we wouldn't be in business, right? Um, we have a policy at Intergen to always talk about our clients as though they're in the room because we have a ton of respect, love, and care for our clients. And even if it's not a tight fit, and that's how we talk about those challenges, if it's not a tight fit, it's because we're not a tight fit. And then we try and work through those challenges. So uh, when I first read this book about three or four years ago, I did realize that 80% of our challenges were coming from 20% of our clients. And we literally analyzed every client against profitability, against how much we enjoyed working with the client against our perception of how much the client enjoyed working with us. And we kind of ranked them. And we uh, identified the 20% that were providing 80% of our challenges. And over the next three months, that was our focus that quarter, like three years ago, we helped those clients find a better situation, um, find a better provider. And you know what it does? If you get rid of, or if you're no longer focused on 80% of your headaches, you've now improved your productivity by 400%. And it's risky. One of the clients that we uh, offloaded at that time uh, was our largest revenue client. Fortunately, we had a large enough uh, uh, revenue base that it's, it wasn't devastating and it was a conscious choice. We called them a snow leopard. Um, this is this beautiful, amazing creature that was had very particular needs um, that we weren't well suited to meet. Um, so it's a risky thing. 
Um, and the problem is everybody wants to get to the growth before they deal with this part. Cause it's like, I want the, cause what you do is that with that 400% improvement, you've now created space to live more in your wheelhouse so that you can serve the people that you're well suited to serve. So this was a mind blowing concept to me. And I can tell you from personal experience, it works. It works. It was scary as hell, but it works. Um, so that was one of the biggest things. And then referrals. Um, how many, does anybody here ask for their existing clients for referrals? Okay. okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. And it's, I, I'm going to play into that a little bit, Pat, because it's like, yeah, it's, it just feels weird. Like, I don't know how. And one of the ideas that Mike uh, proposes is instead of asking like, hey, do you have any friends or other businesses that could use our services or use our websites? <laughs> one of the things that Mike suggests is to say, ask your best clients. Like, I, so that same process of evaluating, you know, profitability, do I enjoy working with them? Do they enjoy working with me? Those are the clients you want to find, right? Yeah. Um, so you, you identify those that are in your current client base and you say, what other vendors are you working with? Who's your email provider? Do you have an IT company that you enjoy working with? Ask for that introduction and then set up a virtual coffee or whatever to have that conversation. Guess what? You found somebody that the one thing you have in common is the kinds of clients you both like to serve. Mm -hmm. And they're not a competitor. They're somebody with a complimentary service. Hey, email guy, any of your clients struggling with their websites? <laughs> and it's a much better referral ask than, hey, do you know anybody else that could use our services? So you're asking your best clients who their vendors are and would they be willing to provide you an introduction? It's a much easier ask because now you're not asking to sell anybody anything. You're just asking for a conversation with somebody who could offer a complimentary service. Then you get into a referral relationship. So phenomenal idea. All right, I'm down to the last one, Profit. Uh, he he wrote a book called Profit First. Um, and it's really the notion of, uh, I'm going to jump into this quick. I don't, I'm don't. i probably pushing late on time. Am I good still, Robin? You're still good. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's really understanding. And this book is not as wonky. This is just as fun and entertaining as toilet paper and pumpkins, I promise, even though it's dealing with the financial aspects of your business. And really, this is the book that inspired me to want to do this presentation. Um, because I think this is one of the areas that uh, entrepreneurs especially struggle most is understanding what's a healthy financial situation for my business. And he really identifies five areas. I know this column has uh, six listed, but the top one is uh, for the next part of the table that I'm about to add. So what's your gross revenue? What's your profit? What's your owner's pay? Uh, how much uh, does your business allocate for taxes? And then OPEX is operating expenses. What are the costs that it takes to run your business? Uh, extension licensing fees, hosting fees, domain registration, paying your accountant, paying your lawyer, all that kind of stuff. That's all operating expenses, right? So the challenge is most of us run our businesses by figuring out four of these items and saving profit for the end, right? We figure out our revenue, we figure out our owner's pay, hopefully, we figure out our um, tax situation, we figure out our operating expenses. And then if there's anything left, we, we get profit. Yay, right? How often does that happen when you get to the last column and it's either a zero or negative, right? So what he what Mike lays out in this book is really uh, how to understand the financial health of your business and how to put profit first. And his contention is you get revenue, right? Gross revenue. And then you allocate, you budget ahead of time. This is how it's going to break down. And one of the resources that he makes available at uh, motorbikemike.com is a free resource. I'm going to give you uh, one or two columns from this table. He breaks it out for every gross revenue range for a, for a particular business, your financial health for your business. And then if you don't understand this process coming out of this presentation, and there's every reason to assume that that's true, the book walks you through very carefully how to put these numbers together. So if what I'm saying is interesting to you and you want to learn more, I would encourage you to check out the book. Uh, the free resource is just a teaser to get you there. Um, so basically, you, you define your gross revenue at the beginning of the conversation. Uh, this is assuming that your business is earning between zero and $250,000 a year. I'm going to guess that's probably 97% of Joomla solopreneurs, right? Um, that that's probably the range of, the, and we're talking gross revenue, not what you take home. It's like every dime that flows through your business. So up to 250000 these are the percentages. And he's not pulling these out of the air. He's worked with hundreds of businesses. And his contention is the healthiest ones tend to land at these percentages. 
So his contention is the very first thing you do is um, set up a separate checking account. And every time money comes into your business, you send 5% of it off to that checking account as profit. That's that's the whole basis of profit first, is every time money comes in, you send 5%. And he even encourages you to do it at a different bank than your normal checking account. So it's a pain in the butt to get to, right? Um, and then once a quarter, you get to celebrate with that profit. Um, so that profit, you as the owner get to bring home, that's your reward for busting your tail, building a cool business. Right. So um, that's the, the profit first. And then how do you get there? He lays out owner's pay. Um, if you're in that range, he's saying about half of the gross revenue for your business should be coming home as your regular compensation. I'm not an accountant. I'm not an attorney. Um, I don't play one on TV. Talk to your professionals about this stuff. I'm just sharing with you the information that Mike gave you in the book. Um, so how would the, what would this look like? What I did is I grabbed the midpoint. I said, let's say your business is doing 125,000. Um, if you're north of this, great. If you're south of this, hey, you're a solopreneur, totally get it. We're not going to talk about where Intergen started in gross revenue year one. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> My wife loves me a lot. Let's just say that. Uh, so uh, gross revenue. Let's say your business is grossing 125000 a year. His recommendation is that you should be setting aside about 1500 bucks every quarter uh, for profit. Um, that should just be set aside. That you would be taking home as 625 uh, your compensation uh, for your salary, and then taxes you'd be setting aside 15%. This works best if you're an LLC. Um, uh, I'm set up as a sub S corp. So how the taxes are handled is a little bit different. Again, if you want to do the deep dive on the taxes versus owner's pay versus profit, read the book. Um, he talks about a lot of that stuff in there. And then operating expenses. He's basically saying you should keep your operating expenses to about 30% of your total business revenue. I would encourage you to take the chart, do the breakdown um, and see where you land. And basically what this does, is it gives you a baseline to say, what's a healthy business? Um, hi folks jumping in. I love the waves. Um, so that's, that's really the basis. And again, his presentation of it is way more entertaining than mine, uh, because it's very much in the spirit of pumpkin plan and uh, the toilet paper entrepreneur. But I found this incredibly insightful because as business owners, we're in the dark. Like what does a healthy business financial statement look like? I'm at the mercy of my accountant or my bookkeeper to give me their best guess based on their other clients. This guy's worked with hundreds and hundreds of entrepreneurs to help understand what a healthy uh, business looks like. And these are his recommendations. So I found it to be a really um, compelling read and very interesting. Um, so to that end, I had to smile at the end of Carlos's presentation. I This is one of my favorite insights that came out of the Joomla community. And as I started my presentation, acknowledging the leadership that's present and the engagement um, in this jug already, uh, just acknowledging a lot of those same folks did carry over from Joomla Day USA, which inspired this talk. And uh, Robin, I'm glad you could join me and, and invite me to join this group as well today. So uh, thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to present and I'm happy to hang out for whatever conversation or questions or insights that people want to share. Yeah, we still have 15 minutes before we wrap up. Please speak up if you have any questions for Brian. I well, know. Not so much a question, but I one thing I really strongly, strongly encourage people to think about is disaster recovery. I mean, and I, I'm involved in emergency management, so we're taught to think in multiple levels. What happens if something happens to my house? What happens if something happens to my neighborhood? What happens if something happens to the area? How do I recover? Yep. And I mean, I've been accused of being paranoid because I have a server here that's backed up to the cloud, and it's also backed up to a RAID device. And then I take backups to a bank and put them in a safety deposit box. And it's like, why? And I said, because if I lose those sources, I have no business. Yeah. You know, I built a, I built a real-time operating system. If those sources disappear, I have no business. Yeah. And and you've created legal liability for the people that are counting on your business to be successful. Right. And actually, it's I'm even backed up further than that. I have two business partners, one in Germany and one in Japan. Everything is fully backed up on their sites as well. Nice. So um, that takes a little bit of thinking to think about, but you know what happens if you have a fire in your home or, or something simple, your server development system crashes, how do you recover? Yeah. Or what happens if you have, at least here in Texas, what happens if you have happens if a tornado goes to your neighborhood? You know, how do you recover? Or a snowstorm. Or a snowstorm. <laughs> Uh, actually, uh, Nicholas from Akiba did a really nice session at Joomla Day USA. If you do have a registration to go check out those videos, uh, but he did a really nice piece focused pretty much exclusively on securing your websites, which is one of the avenues <laughs> that um, we talked about. 
Um, but yeah, uh, thank you for highlighting that. Um, I, I obviously agree completely. It's it's good to give some thought to the what if scenarios. I know Anna brought up that in Sweden, she pays 50% taxes. And when she did her spotlight uh, several months back, she actually started her business when she was living in France and they gave you tax free for new businesses for the first two years, two, two years, years. Years. kind of like their approach, but now she's back to paying 50, but I guess you get a lot. And I appreciate you saying that. I don't know. Um, he does not deal with international tax situations uh, in the book, <laughs> uh, but that's why I encourage you to talk to your professionals. I, I'll, I'll give you like one, even for me, it's, it's a little interesting because Intergen is structured as a sub S corp. So I get paid as an employee of the corporation and I'm taxed as an employee of the corporation. But then any profit that my business has comes home as investment income or unearned income. <laughs> of course, it's unearned, right? Um, but it comes home as investment income, which is taxed at a different rate. Um, and in the US, I believe, and again, not an accountant, I believe it's 15% presently, uh, depending upon uh, what your income levels are and all of that. So there is some complication in terms of when I look at that 15% that he's giving you on the chart that the business is setting aside, well, I'm like, well, my salary is already taxed at my current tax rate. Um, so in basically the philosophy behind it is, uh, your business, if you're a business owner, your business should be paying your taxes for you. Um, you shouldn't be taking that out of your income. You shouldn't be taking that. So that's, he's just keeping that tax column in there to say, not only should you be making a good salary, not only should you be bringing home profit, but as a business owner, your business should be paying the taxes that it creates on your behalf. So how those percentages play out in your context, I read the book, talk to your accountant. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. I also love how everyone answered your questions and what type of business uh, websites do you do and how everyone was very, pretty much very specific. And that's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I also love asking for referral partners versus just asking for referrals because that's, that's great. Whenever I do a lot of networking, I've been networking for a really long time. My best partners are my IT folks, you know? Yeah. And we're, we're dealing with the same types of questions every day and we're techie and we're smart and they're asking me to, oh, set up their emails and, and, and all this other stuff. And I'm like, nope, just websites. And so my IT folks are getting asked to do websites. And so those, those, those are the chicken rather than the egg. And it's a pretty good point um, that we should probably partner with as many as we, oh, the best ones through yeah. our client, right? Because that was the part I missed. I'll call up and talk to any IT person, but asking my client for their, their tried and true IT guy is a, an example of someone they're very, very happy with. And those are the types of IT folks I really want to talk to, right? And again, if you've, uh, you've, you've identified it's one of your tightest connections in terms of a client mm -hmm. and you're asking them, they're going to, the, the vendors, they're going to refer you to are people that they feel strongly about. They don't want to set up a bad situation, you know, then it's not good for them either. So they'll refer their favorite vendors to you and it, it should be lightning strikes. Um, and it's a similar situation, Robin, we've, you know, it, <laughs> websites, you have to deal with email. Like eventually you end up dealing with somebody's right. emails. Right. It's got to work. It's kind of works. So and ask. we we provide email through one of the major vendors. I promised I wasn't going to do any more proprietary, and I'm happy not to give them any more business. Um, we so we provide email as a reseller through one of the major providers, but not the other major provider. And we've developed a really strong relationship with somebody that loves providing those services, and it's great. Now, anytime I've got a client that calls, it has an email issue. Mm -hmm. If it's not just a matter of us setting it up, I'm like, hey, I'm going to give you an introduction. And I used to lead with. I'm going to give you an introduction. We don't use their services presently, but I've sent a few people their way and we've gotten some good feedback. No, I don't even do no, that. No, no, no. I have to use it first and it works first. You well, and that's because we don't, it's a solution that we don't use for our own. I'm a big fan of it's the classic oh, okay. eat your own dog food. I'm a huge fan of that. Mm -hmm. But in this case, I can't use all the email platforms. So we provide one, we don't provide the other. And we got out of uh, web server based email probably a decade ago. Um, yeah, I see the head nod from Lisa going, yep. <laughs> yep. I see Frank saying something in the in the chat. What's going on? Do you have a question? On mute, on mute. Yep. No, it was just a disaster recovery and people were talking about the things that uh, affect their area. And uh, oh. here, of course, it's earthquakes. Oh, uh, gotcha. Gotcha. 
All right. This is this is um, thought provoking for sure. And I might even check out these books or maybe they have some um, podcasts from these books. Mike Motorbike, everyone. Yeah. And I, I will concede that those three in particular, I grabbed the things that were most meaningful to me um, and that I thought were most significant out of the books. You may read them and get yeah. something. I'm just sharing with you the value that I got. Um, so and if, if you do find something, feel free to let me know like, hey, this was meaningful or whatever. It's we take for granted. Um, uh, but even as Robin is learning in this call, you know, she's just been tossing stuff out to the universe um, and, and realizing that, oh, people value the YouTube videos that I've been posting. That's interesting. <laughs> so uh, sometimes it's easy for us that are the con content uh, recipients uh, to take for granted. Um, I was very affirming again, Robin, for you to invite me to share this again. It's one thing to say, oh, I enjoyed your presentation. It's another thing to have somebody say, there's 20 other people I'd love for you to share that with. So uh, thank you for that nice feedback. Excellent. And SD? Hey, I just wanted to say thank you guys again for having this. This is great for us as a Joomla community to have this forum. I sometimes felt like I was on an island with my user group because a lot of our members retired. So yeah. um, it's nice to know that um, once we get going again, that there are some people who would you know, potentially join our group and have some interesting comments and things like that. And Brian, it's always a pleasure to sit in on your talks. They're always thought provoking. And in this case, thank you for um, sharing the books that I have come to enjoy reading and rereading so that I feel that I'm not on an island. Uh, so uh, with that, I do have to drop, but I wanted to say thank you guys again and hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Great. Thanks, Esty. All right, everyone. So our next meeting is going to be bringing up my year, month, July, third Thursday. Looks like the 20th. Um, look for it on the Facebook page. And um, please, I'm going to reach out to you to see if you'll be a spotlight. We love our spotlights. And um, I'm always, you know what, if, if there's a topic you're interested in, just reach out to me and I will try to find somebody um, who's doing a topic like that and um, through my connections or if you know someone I know Joe knows everyone so I sometimes lean on him and um, we can get some great speakers in here and every month and we'll see each other and check in with each other and um, until then I don't have Tim here to close us out <laughs> he usually closes us out um, but I hope you're well and um, and we'll see you all next time great thanks Robin Take care. Mm -hmm.